Yes, and EpiPens are a fantastic example of a public health policy failure in the U.S. and Canada. EpiPens currently cost about $650 on average in the U.S., with generic versions costing not that much less. Canada's not much better. We're still seeing EpiPens at about $150 for a single one, even though we do negotiate prices down. And if you think this is due to research and development costs needing to be recouped, no. The EpiPen was developed in the 70s, and as of 2015 was making $1.5 billion in sales every year. They've recouped their costs. And it only costs them about 35 bucks to make the things. Why is it so high? Well, in 2007, the company Mylan bought the company that makes EpiPens and started increasing the price. There had been some price inflation before Mylan bought the company, but let's just look at the chart. 2007, EpiPens cost about $70 to $100 per. As of 2016, they cost over $600 for a twin pack. You're probably wondering why there aren't generic versions of the EpiPen and why they're not pushing prices down. The FDA did finally put out a generic version of the EpiPen in 2019, and fortunately it is... Oh, I was, I was sitting in front of the knot. So this TikToker, Marcus Territory, points out one of the most frustrating things about the medical industry in the United States of America. And it actually gets more frustrating than what he's talking about. Now, first and foremost, we need to understand that... Theoretically, the cost of pharmaceuticals should be going down every year because the cost of manufacturing pharmaceuticals goes down every single year. With all of the fantastic bioprocessing techniques that we have developed, it actually turns out that once we've designed a new drug and we know it works, it is actually far cheaper to produce it than ever before. And things like insulin, for example, are incredibly cheap to make. But instead of getting cheaper every single year, these things actually get more expensive. Now. The companies that do this like to say that they're recouping now the companies that do this like to say that they're recouping the research and development costs and that it keeps getting more and more expensive to do the research and development behind these pharmaceuticals. But that's actually not true either because this is where it gets really wild. There are basically two ways that the most revolutionary pharmaceuticals actually get developed. The first way is by the federal government. That's right. The first way is by federal and state governments, whether it be through universities or public research institutions that actually do the real material work behind developing these new drugs. Very often, unfortunately, though, private companies still manage to get the patents on those drugs and then profit off of them and price gouge off of them. The other way is is small independent investors start up their own biotech company, they try to innovate something revolutionary and new, and then a giant pharmaceutical company buys them up and then either releases their pharmaceutical or refuses to release their pharmaceutical and let the research process die. Now, why would they let the research process die? The answer to that is actually quite simple. Instead of restructuring their existing infrastructure to make new pharmaceuticals that would maybe compete with the previously existing pharmaceuticals, they realize that it would actually be cheaper just to kill the competition. And so very often, that is exactly what happens. Which means that one of two things is typically happening when you're talking about research and development in the pharmaceutical industry. Either the government is actually paying for most of the research and development, or companies can find fun loopholes to avoid actually paying the bill. And then the research and development that giant pharmaceutical companies actually are doing, for the most part, is creating biosimilars. Basically recreating pharmaceuticals that exist elsewhere but are slightly different so they can get a patent on it. This is why pharmaceutical development has actually sort of slowed down in recent years. It's because the increased privatization of pharmaceutical research has led to more copycats and more recreating the wheel than actually developing like revolutionary medicine. And so these companies mostly make their money off of price gouging and they increase the price every year, not because anything about their business gets more expensive, but because they want to serve the shareholders and the shareholders expect increased value every year, which means that they have to make increased profits every year. And this is something that applies to the rest of the economy as well. The reality is that with automation, our advances in technology, and everything that's happening in the world, things should actually be getting cheaper. Most things that we enjoy and we purchase should be getting cheaper year over year. Inflation is actually not natural in this environment, especially when it comes to technology and pharmaceuticals. These are things that science and research make cheaper every single year because we get more efficient. But those efficiencies instead of being reflected in reductions in price, just are reflected in increased profit margin. But the increased profit margin from that efficiency is not enough. So they also increase the price. 
to even further expand the increased profit margin. And that, I think, calls into question the idea that GDP should increase. Because so long as we measure the success of our country based off of GDP and based off of whether or not the stock market goes up, we have some really wrong-headed ideas about what our goals should be. Because pharmaceuticals getting cheaper would definitely be better for people's lives and our ability to exist in the world. But pharmaceuticals getting more expensive is very, very good for the stock market and it's very, very good for GDP. And so this is where an increase in GDP actually leads to a decrease in the quality of life for average people. Which is why when we have a technology-based economy, our aim should be to move towards a post-growth economy. That the growth that we see comes in the increased value of our dollar that stems from a deflation. It comes from a reduction of the cost of living. But instead of seeing that, these giant companies want to see a profit. And to make it even better, the people elected into Congress, they think that GDP should go up too. Which is another reason why, instead of having a reasonable process for pharmaceutical development, very often what we see is corporate handouts. The government subsidizing all the research and development, and then these private companies coming in and taking all the profits and price gouging you in the process. If you ask me, I think if we recognize that the government is already funding the most successful drugs, then maybe perhaps the government should be the one actually doing the research and development for all of this life-saving pharmaceuticals. And maybe perhaps they should keep the patents so that if we have public ownership of the medicine that we need to live, then we could all benefit from the shared reduction in cost. This is Ben Carolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain on the Young Turks Twitch channel every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to stay up to date with my content, you can follow me at Benjamin Carollo on Twitter. And for those of you that might be wondering or have noticed, my pronouns are in fact she, her.